Hey guys, I recently got a Tascam US16X08 interface and I just wanted to do unbox and talk about my first impressions on it. So here it is. Okay, so hat is on the back. Comes with instructions, which uh, we're not going to look at. This is going to be a uh, slightly uneducated unboxing and first impressions, but uh, here are the cables. You need to plug it into the computer, power cable, and also on this box, so I'm not just taking everything out, we have the uh, rack mountable sides you can put on to the interface in this orientation, if you have a rack mount of course. Okay, here is the interface. So the way that this thing is set up is you have four chains that you can select phantom power on or off. So one through four, that'd be on. Five through eight, that'd be on. You can have them all off if you're using all dynamic microphones. And uh, you have all your trim for one through 10. And then you have line and instrument for nine and 10. And on the back, you have your extended inputs. So line in 11 through 16. And a good thing to note on these back inputs is these are fixed ratio inputs outside of the switch. And we'll take a closer look at what that means when we go to the desktop mixer. You have your auto power save for people who like to save on energy, USB input, power, and then you have your line outs, which if you're just doing stereo left and right, you just use one and two. And if you're doing like surround sound setup or some other elaborate multiple monitor setup, you can use the others and just have this as your splitter. So let's do a size comparison of this thing versus the Tascam US 1200, which is the old interface that I've been using. So the 16X08 is substantially smaller than the 1200, which is impressive because it has like way more inputs. It's about three inches shorter in terms from back to front, and it's the exact same size from side to side. You have like a smaller format and more inputs. Cool, so let's take a look at the desktop mixer. So just to preface, I'm recording this into a Pro Tools session. The signal's not very hot. And I'm using a SM57 with, uh, with no pop filter, so you're going to be hearing all these great plosions when I uh, really get to say in those P's with the settings panel here. So let's take a look at what we have set up. So running through channel 1, here are your faders. So if you're like recording a drummer, you can say, hey, on channel 1 is my snare. Uh, he doesn't want to hear much of that because he can hear it right in front of him. Let's turn that down. But what that doesn't do, it doesn't turn the volume down on your session. So you guys are going to be able to hear me the same volume. Only me, only I am going to be able to hear the difference. And if you double click, the fader goes back to the zero position. You can also link channels. So if you have overheads, you can also manually flip the phase of the overheads if you want to do that. And this will be able to go into Pro Tools and you can set up a stereo input and then just track to the stereo input with the linked channels. So we also have all these analog inputs here. What does that mean? That literally just means you click on that, it opens your equalizer and your compressor for that channel. So you can't just go analog off and be like, okay, I want to be on channel two. You can't just select it. You have to select analog and it'll open the compressor. You can do some weird ratio stuff to that compressor. You click on analog one and you set that compressor. Uh, I don't know if there's a, a zero out key or anything, but uh, we're just gonna not use that. I typically don't use the compressors or EQs on the interface, but uh, if I were to want to run a live session and the singer would want to hear himself more and I'm completely knowledgeable about how this compressor works and how it sounds, I may want to do that so he has a more level feed coming back to his headphones or her headphones. So here we have the second page of our interface. 
and it just controls buffer size and the true bypass. I haven't looked about what the true bypass actually means with this unit. So we're able to record with a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. And here is our last page, which is the output settings, which can kind of be confusing because you can't really tell what on here is clickable. Uh, so let's talk about that real quick. None of this stuff you can click on. This is just a diagram about how all the inputs flow through the mixing board here and go to the outputs, which is the stereo bus or whatever you select. Uh, you can go to all these other outputs or you can go to master left and right, which is what I do because I only have two speakers. And there's also this computer set, the stereo bus. Uh, so this is taking all the information that your computer has, like the information from your Pro Tools session, all the other music that your singer is listening to, and it'll send it through the headphones or through the speakers. And that was my chin hitting the microphone. So as you can see, I'm running through channel one, and this is my trim knob or volume knob or gain knob, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're about at two o'clock here. So we can roll that back, get less input. Of course, I'm just going to use the microphone on the camera because you're probably not going to be able to hear that very well. And you can roll more gain into it, which we still aren't very close to clipping, but it's uh, a little bit more gain that I would want to use on this type of microphone for any sort of voiceover. <laughs> so as you can tell, there's not a trim knob for any of the back six inputs. And like I was saying earlier, that's because they're fixed ratio inputs. So let's take a look at what that sounds like. So for this, we're going to be using a converter. This is just a simple microphone converter, male to male, to run it into the back. We're going to run it in channel 15, just because that's an easy one to access. I'm sure all the back ports are the same style of preamp. So let's get back to our desktop view. So now we're recording on channel 15. I switched Pro Tools input to channel 15. And one thing that you'll notice is that when I talk into this on this interface, this mixer panel, on channel 15, you're not hearing, well, you kind of, you see that now. It's just very, very quiet. So, so my application for this would be extremely loud sound sources like toms or snares or uh, if you have a guitar amp that's that loud, you could use it that way. And I'm talking in the microphone that you can hear me, but you, it's just too quiet. You don't have a trim knob on the front of the mixing panel. Like I was saying, this is a fixed ratio thing. You can mess with the faders, but that's not going to make your recording input volume any louder. That's just going to make your playback volume louder. It's also important to note that I have the switch on the back set to minus 10. So we're going to switch that over to plus 4. So now we're on plus 4. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and turn the compressor on, push some gain, so you're going to be able to uh, hopefully, you can't, you, you still can't see it in Pro Tools. I'm literally pushing all the volume I can push with this now. So let's switch back over to minus 10. So this is something that I found interesting. When I switched over to minus 10, it actually gives me more gain. So I'm not sure how that really works. You know what? I'm going to stop being this guy and I'm going to actually look, oh man, at the instructions. Everything's French. I've gone too far. Hey guys, Aaron from the future here and I just finished out the video you guys are watching. And while I was rendering, I was doing some research on the plus 4 dBU to minus 10 dBV switch. To keep this short, the plus 4 dBU is like a professional grade line setting and the minus 10 is a consumer grade line setting. So the reason that the minus 10 is louder is that it expects the signal going into it to be quieter. So the ratio that it has its line set at will try and keep it at one level while the plus 4 is trying to adjust for a really loud signal. So that said, it's more in reference to the audio going in than what we're hearing out of it. So back to the video where Aaron doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to that. Decibel V, minus 10 decibel Vs, to plus 4 decibel U. <laughs> okay, I gotta do some research again. So this is some really complex stuff that I don't understand and I will have to look into further later, but... The minus 10 dBV switch actually 
has more gain than the plus 4 dBU switch. And that has something to do with voltage. And uh, if you look here, then you'll be able to see why I'm just like not that interested and in trying to figure that all out right now. <laughs> if you're trying to record drums, you got enough, you got enough space sonically that you're not going to be clipping every time you hit a tom or a snare, and you have enough inputs to record as many microphones as you can. But of course, just remember when you're recording a bunch of microphones, you're gonna possibly run into phase issues, which can be handled with uh, one of these phase switches on the mixing panel. So, that said, that's all I have for this uh, kind of unboxing and first impressions video. Uh, I guess my first impression would overall be that this is gonna be a really cool unit, and it already has less issues than the 1200, and I'm excited to be going into some drum tracking later next month and using this interface for that. Okay guys, thanks for watching, and I guess I have to uh, actually ask people to subscribe to the channel now, because uh, YouTube is trying to, trying to be a difficult thing, and uh, stick around, I have more content coming. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this instruction manual reading lifestyle. Did not need to start recording yet.